Uh, awesome. Bobby, do you want to go up and show the um, the image of the classes of how you know from right in the the very October fifteenth starting yeah. over because I think I mean I think that's our that's our best. This was our original. Um, so this is the mural board. Uh, I'll I'll do the link just one more time just to make it convenient for folks. Good. Have it in the chat if you want to go wander around on your own. Um, this is what people said early, right? Uh, the faculty, the staff, the departments, kind of what they were thinking in terms of uh, where it was coming from. Then we did a little bit of a question. We didn't uh, over here. I'm thinking of that. that testing course, a new course, or co-curricular. So we, yes. did, we did those two exercises to get a feel for it. Um, some people like, as in that's end of the semester has got really crowded. So she, she said, you can't join us. And you know, we had a, you know, we've had that kind of stuff happen. Um, so let's, um, but I was thinking Bobby of showing them the whole thing from, from zero class one to class 30 and the boxes. Yep. Because you put up a way that it could be, or we put up a way that it could be done here, right? I mean, one way to do it, Steve, is this, is that you have, you know, that, you know, you can run it the first eight weeks with that in mind, you know, with the way that oh. I laid it out. And mm -hmm. the last half of the class is totally dedicated toward the topic matter. Or you could integrate some, you know, you could take out the cases, you know, I have my students read case studies. You don't have to have them read that. That's more depth. Maybe you pull that out and then you include more material in week one through eight while you're still doing issue development, you know, um, change theory, while you're introducing those concepts, you could be doing some of the course concepts. But then once nine through 15 happen, those are primarily, they could be primarily working in the, in the field at hand, you're, the topic you wanna to talk about and then you, they could be some time toward the campaigns. That's our best attempt, Steve. And what no, I see that. It, it might it might not work, and you know because no one has really done it like that yet. So you'll be you'll be one of the first, and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Akila and Frank, I don't know if you, what you're thinking about too, and and Susan, and Venice is on the phone call too. Venice is different because I actually just went and talked to Venice's class. And um, I hope that went okay, Denise, is that, you know, they're doing it kind of the research history beforehand. And then the second semester is ah. the, the social action. So, but it's a year program and year the program. masters of social work at San Jose State are doing it that way as well. So that's another model. But in this one semester model, yeah. I think we're gonna have to figure it out. So the people are doing it like, I mean, for um, Akila and Frank, what do you what are you thinking about doing? Like, how much of that of the course material are you going to include in upfront? Is it going to be more more on the act, you know, kind of the campaign stuff up front, and then more of the material, or how do you see that happening? <coughs> for me, forgive me, it sounds. I'll be yeah. teaching it in the semester. Um, so I sent a kind of a mock-up of the syllabus into you to sort of review, but providing some of those lessons throughout. So then we can kind of front load them and then towards the tail end, they can do that type of action. And then I'm thinking from, you know, even if I was to incorporate this into the Institute, I want to build it in as a module to teach the students that are interning with me. Okay. Good. So Akia, you have a, a syllabus that you've developed for this one semester, one semester? Yeah, so um, I've got a course that I just created. I'm teaching it this first time right now, but it just got approved as an area F for SJSU and ethnic studies. So uh -huh. it already went through. So now I'm having to also, then I wanna layer it with the social action. So um, I looked through and tried to find spaces where I could insert those readings, um, but then to, they already had a social action project but to bolster it with the, the change, a uh, student guide to social action book. So then at, towards the end of the semester, they can actually, you know, kind of live out that particular project. 
And so I'm kind of playing around with it now this semester. I'm watching the videos and I'm using it in the class right now. <laughs> so they don't know, but um, many of them are, are, are taking hold of it. So I was even excited with this week's reading um, to be able to share some of the, the strategies and tactic, tactics. So more so this semester, it will more be like a plan. They won't actually be able to sort of realize everything, but at least it's got me thinking about their capability in this space of time. But Keila, that 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 um, that that that, ex that experience of the first time you teach it, not everything happening, you know, not being able to squeeze it all in, that ha that happened a lot with uh, other folks. Miriam Shackow, who who we've had a, um, she was on that thing the other night. First semester, she goes, oh, I didn't get the campaigns, didn't get started until week, you know, they didn't even choose their their issue until week four or five, and therefore they ran out of time. So. Each time you go through, you make those adjustments, and and the managing time is one of the big ones. And, yes, me, and, I, and I'm okay with them not finishing. I, I want them to get kind of get the idea and the plan. So I'm okay this semester because of the way we built it in of them just sort of conceptualizing what it will take to move it forward. So they're still getting that knowledge, but I'll definitely incorporate that um, and and plan better for next semester. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that, Akila. Can I ask a question really, really fast? Um, I'm just curious of whatever everyone else is going to do, um, what their classes look like, meaning is it, are you meeting your classes two, two times a week for an hour? So mine is once a week for three hours. So um, I'm thinking of breaking it up like <laughs> each hour um, to those three hours, like, you know, teach a lesson the first hour, second hour, third hour to try to get everything in because I only get them once a week. So I would just, so Steven said two times a week. Two times a week. I don't know what everybody else is doing. I prefer teaching wise, educationally, two times is better. You try to jam everything into one and uh, it's a lot of work too, once a week. You know, and even with the two times, you know, you could, another way to do it and I think I mean, at some point I even tried it was like more of like, one second, um, more of, turn that off, more of the kind of the theoretical in the class on the Tuesday and then on the Thursday can be more of the action. So you can huh. kind of do it that way too. So then it may be the, the first half you do that and the second half you do more of the action, it sounds like. Yep. You now if you're looking at this, chart each box is a is a is basically an hour hour and 15. so you may be able to sort of visualize not using this exact setup necessarily but just visualize how you might block it you know um so if this is actually a, a week uh rather than two classes that's one class but covering two topics and mm -hmm. really interesting in a way you have a little bit more well no you don't have more time so hour and 15 and hour 15 is Two and a half. You may be a little bit more time than some of the other folks have in total. Uh, Scott, in your classes, roughly when you're doing the in that earlier part of it, um, how much time per class? You have an hour and fifteen minute class. How much time per class is group work time? If you give them, well, I, I try to say twenty to thirty minutes, but like yesterday, the conversation went long. We were talking about BLM, and we're talking about. You know, the, the, the taxes and strategy, and then we went longer. And so they had five minutes. And then I actually wrote them an apology today. I was like, so sorry, we we're supposed to get more group time. First thing will be next time. So that kind of thing happens where, and it can happen the other way too, where you don't get to the reading because yeah, if you start with group time, it, it, it might just be that expansive. But I try to give them 20 or at least 15 to 20 where they're in a small group and they can at least brainstorm. Yeah. But that hasn't been always the way it was. Sometimes it was a half an hour on a, on a Thursday too. It's yeah. just, a, you know, I think you're going to have to all figure out what's the right flow for you all. Does anyone else want to add on this conversation? Then we'll, we'll go on with the, com the topic of the day. Yeah, I wanted to add something, Scott, well, um, to your initial question, which um, was having me think about the portfolio assignment, yeah. which yeah. I really liked. As an instructor, I've never assigned that to a class, but as a student, I remember um, participating in, in that type of a coursework and feeling real like accomplished and proud of what I did. So 
um, yeah, to integrate that into the into the classroom. And then I think that's where I can find the balance between the social justice, social action literature um, versus, you know, the, the class content and the materials that I have. So, um, you know, it'll be, you know, partially the kind of theoretical lens, but then also maybe those case studies or any other articles or chapters that I would regularly assign to my to the class, right, without the social action component. So I think that's where I can kind of make up some of that ground and, and play with it a little bit, right? Like um, maybe this class, I'm emphasizing it uh, a lot, or I can assign it where they have to go over it themselves. And so I can kind of have some of that leeway to be able, hey, this week, you know, maybe not so much 50-50 in terms of my lecture or uh, the setup of the, the makeup of the class, but um, maybe I'll do 70-30 or 60-40. You know, I can kind of have that maneuverability. So I, I think the portfolio kind of lends itself to that flexibility. And um, I'm definitely um, set on, um, on using that as one of the tools. And what's interesting about that, Frank, is that just now, now we're just about to do our third set of portfolios. They're doing them right now. And they're just now getting, oh, what you're wanting me to do is to, to, to explain the text, you know, analyze it, and then apply yeah. it to the camp. That's what you want. I'm like, <laughs> yes. That's what I've been saying from like a long time ago, but they're not used to doing it. And I, I'm actually thinking of doing it. I usually, you know, by the second portfolio, they kind of got it, but I think we're still in COVID times. So I might even give them where the third portfolio, I'm going to weight it more, the third set, the yeah. last set, like where they end up. I'm going to weight that more than the second and the first just to help them because it's not like they're not trying. It's just that they, they're they used to just regurgitating. And this is not regurgitation. This is like, you know, and, and even better is like, oh, here is my action. And this is how it relates to what I read about Du Bois or about Occupy or whatever it is. They're going backwards to the text from their campaign. So we could go either way, right? From text yeah. to action or action back to text. And I feel like just now they're kind of getting it and um, a little little delayed, I, but I think we're all delayed in COVID times. Scott, just from a, from a, if I was an outsider going, oh, these kind of experiential learning courses, they're not as deep, they don't address the intellectual material as deeply. Yeah. The theories, the concepts. Um, I mean, that, that will be a, a critique. That is a critique. But, but I think you're saying is that um, by the end of the class, for the students for whom it worked, which is, a, from my art description, quite a few, the vast majority, they actually understand the, the academic, the, the intellectual, the theory better uh, yes. because they've had this wrestling match with it in, in action. Is that, is that, would you make that case to people? Yes. And, and, and I would make the case that they will go and like when they do research, they will do it with more intensity and there'll be a better product out of it. And it won't just have been in my class, it'll be in all the other classes too, because they're starting to apply that across their other classes. So yeah. absolutely, my experience. Yeah. Scott, yeah, wanted, uh, wanted, uh, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do, Bobby, can you show that? One of the things that just for the future is we did it for the first time we had the three professors that are teaching social action across the country, one at Middlebury Institute of International Studies, it's actually uh, in, in Monterey, uh, who, at the master's level, another course at the College of New Jersey, and my course. And we had 30 plus participants from the students on that call. It was uh, extra credit from my experience. I, I, was giving, I gave them extra credit to do it. But there was a cross fertilization of ideas of, of their tactics and strategies and of their issues. And we're hoping to do that. Do you want to show them that one? I showed them the- um, So, so there, that. there's the, they're the campaigns. They're the campaign flyers. So all the flyers were up. They did their organizational wrap. And then we gave them time within, their, uh, within the three campuses to talk among themselves about their campaigns and what they're, like, what's their biggest lessons they're learning. And I think my students really appreciated it um, and I think that's what we want to do next semester. So if you're teaching it next semester, we'd like to bring your students together like about two thirds of the way through. And they, my students started seeing the interconnections between particularly the Monterey programs that were working on homelessness and how, on housing issues, as well as period poverty, which is an interesting concept. So, 
super excited. Hopefully that, that's something that you can work into your, your course syllabus for next semester. And we called it just to give it some gravitas, the, a, a national summit our national college summit on social action. And the students really like, they were excited to participate in across the country. And it'll even be more so next year semester, we'll probably have maybe closer to 10 classes. So that just lets you know that's coming. And, and I'll post that, I'll post a, uh, I have to edit that a little bit just to get rid of the junk, but I'll post that um, probably next week, some point. Um, and, and Sue, Sue was on that w with us, which was wonderful yeah. he joined us. I'm not sure if you're there, so I see your image, but. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I'm here. It was great. I, uh, it was really, it, it was, it was fun to see the students get together and, and do these two minute pitches, um, which is a hard skill to master and they did a great job. Yeah, it's on page 1661. If you want to look at the change book on the organizational wrap. And in my class, we do one every class, no matter what. And, um, and some students like they don't, you know, you know, when we always say, what, what, what did the person do well and what were the challenges? And like, sometimes I say the challenge is that, you know, you need, to, you need to say what your name of your group is. And you didn't say, you didn't include where you can get a hold of you. And you didn't say maybe where your next you know, event was going to be. So they, they get better as they do them because I continually go back to how to do an organizational wrap and kind of the, the eight points of that. So, and I do it, and it takes like just two or three minutes. And it's just like, Again, they, they get it like student centered. This is not, this is not, you know, centered outside the student, like we're, it's our thing rather than the professor's thing. So let's talk about today, the tactics and strategy. You want to bring that up, Bobby? I don't see it on mine. Yeah. So this is just, just to, just to situate us, we've got this session and put two more. Uh, we move those into, into later January. So you see that there, um, we're not going to meet um have i got this wrong i think there's one day in there yeah, there's, well, i've got this wrong yeah my my mistake there's one there's one more day here it's december um, 10th i think yeah I so I'll, I'll i'll fix that yep um but we are where we got the campaign yep. kickoff next time that actually is is december 10th so we're missing one week well plus the holiday and then we'll do the campaign plan the 21st and then the final session which is what i'm missing it will be there. Um, yeah. and, and just to add to that, if you go back just a little bit, about, like this is right before like, okay, they're about to say to the campus and particularly if it's, a, and I had, you know, five new campaigns, like, which was a challenge. There was a lot of new campaigns. You know, they're announcing we're, we're, we're here. And I would say out of my class, really, we had six campaigns to start, one of them collapsed. So five campaigns. We've had one, two, three, three do, you know, kind of kickoff events where, and, and, and all of them got press. Um, and um, uh, so it's been, and the last one just occurred this last week, the Students Against Mass Incarceration. They held a rally in a march. And as we get to the rally in the march, we'll talk a little bit about what they learned about the rally. Because if you're going to do a rally, you got to have 20 people. And that takes time to get 20 people. And they try to do it in a week. So that's a hard pull off to do. And we could chat about, you got to give yourself a little more time to get maybe 20 people there. You can't do it within a week, um, but they, they learned good lessons. So this is, as, as we go into like the, the campaign kickoff, which is really kind of the blast off of the campaign, you know, you're, you're making a public statement, you know, we're, we're, we're to the community, whether the campus and the larger community, we try to get press there. It's kind of like telling the public what you are and, we generally like to do that as close as we can to the decision maker or the target, to the closest to their office if we can, if it's if it's a particular person. Can you is it over a little bit, Bobby? So I can see this up on the left. And these are the and 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 in preparation for that kickoff, we want to say what are the strategies and tactics that your campaign can use. And the stuff in the green up there are the strategy. I don't see it, Bobby, on mine. Uh, you don't see this up here, legislation, or, alliance I think, I building. There. Now it's there. So legislation. So the first two, it's really legislation and policy. Those two are those two are key because you're either trying to change a policy within an administration, usually within some institution, and or you're trying to change and bring a new law. Those are generally the two ways of what your campaign's doing. You're trying to change something within an institution that's a policy, a pattern of behavior 
could be a, a written policy, it could be a norm, um, you know, but it's generally, it's a way that institution operates and you're asking for a change. And then the second one is a legislation. You want a new law, like the students advocated for minimum wage, a new legislation. So those are the two kind of strategies that they choose from. And once they choose those two, the next four are kind of the way to build power and to exert their power publicly. And that's the difference with the with really the 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 three on the right, the media, public relations, the disruption, the target meetings, those are all public displays of their power. They're doing it publicly, usually in front of the press. We'll talk a little about even doing your target meeting to get the press involved, because I think that's really helpful. Because if you do a meeting and have the press there to hear your answer, that's some, that puts, again, pressure on the target. If you do it and no one knows about it, there's no pressure being put on the target. By the way, the target doesn't like it very much, <laughs> but that's we'll talk about that later. And then the alliance building is, again, the generation of your power. Like, how do you get power? You have more people and your people you either get, you recruit those people or you bring in your allies to be part of your, your, your activities, which are really the, the ones up top. So let's, in the video, I'm not sure we put the video together, you know, Bobby's doing an amazing job of doing that putting that together. So I'm not sure how many of you seen it, but I thought we'd go through a, has anyone seen it at all? Did anyone get a chance to see it? Akila saw it, awesome. Anyone else? Yep, I watched it. Awesome, Julie. Anyone, did you see it, Frank or Steve or Sue? It seems like most of them saw it. So, so, so I, I'm sort of interested in, the, in this, this question here. What most engaged you guys? Yeah. Particularly if you saw the video, so you can. Yeah. So, what are those so Julie, we'll start with you then. Yep. You no, I just, was it Akila? I don't know who yeah. you said. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Akila. I would just say the, the variety or the combination of strategies and tactics and, and even kind of understanding the differentiation, but then how you can sort of use them in different ways. Because the thing I was thinking about, I'm in sort of in the sports sector um, and I know a number of our students are, you know, do 5Ks and things of that nature to sort of raise some sort of awareness. So just to even sort of see um, those particular options, but then even the, <laughs> the theater I thought was interesting. I'm like, how would they act out some of this um, as well um, with their efforts? But I like the fact that there are um, a certain amount of strategies, a certain amount of stra uh, tactics. Um, I'll probably take from the reading and create some sort of grid so they can be able to sort of see and differentiate the, the different types and then the different ways that they can possibly sort of pick and choose. Yeah, because under each one of those, like under media and public relations, each one of those has six or seven things you can do or tactics. And I, as I say in the, in the reading, I mean, you know, you, they're like on page 48 of what I, what I sent you all or what you had a chance to read is that it's like cards in a, you know, you're playing a game and you have a deck of cards and you, you, can play, you can play a certain card at a certain time. And sometimes, and I always say, start low. Another metaphor you know, is the deck of cards. Another metaphor is a burner and you wanna turn the burner slowly up on the, on the decision maker. You don't start at you know, the highest heat, you start at a lower heat and then turn the heat up. And there's all sorts of reasons we could talk about why that's important, but as you turn up the heat, but if you play the right card at the right time, even a two of diamonds can be powerful or a two of state, right? It can be powerful in, under a certain situation. So a campaign um, rally as a kickoff event, if played right, can be put so much pressure on the, on the candidate that they force them to act. If, and, I, and I'll give you some examples of that. You wouldn't think just holding a press conference would force the, the target to respond, but it can. And a, and, a, and a rally is a really low level of heat. You know, it's not, you're not occupying any space. You know, there's no civil disobedience. There's not, it's not high level, but if played right, you can put a lot of heat. Other yeah. folks about what, what engaged them. Of yeah. that, of uh, the uh, Julie. Yeah, I think that the idea, 
that one of the things that really resonated with me is the students being comfortable asking for things or sort of demanding things. And so like turning up the heat is one way, but just to get them comfortable with making, putting pressure on others and recognizing that doing so doesn't mean that they're a mean person, but that they have something that they care about that they want to see come to fruition. And yet I think oftentimes their reticence as undergrads is they don't know exactly how to operate in that world and how to make those asks without feeling like they are, you know, disagreeable people. So I think that's a really, it really resonated with me. And I think all of the strategies are to be able to remind them that this is how you demonstrate your power, not necessarily how you upset the power makers, even though those people may not agree with you, but these are all skills that you can use in order to do those things, which is a foreign, I think for even my political science students at McAllister is sometimes a bit of a foreign concept, like the idea of exerting some sort of power or expecting those that have power to listen is uh, very eye-opening for them. Well said. I agree with it all. Other folks, about what was most engaging about the strategy and the tactics? I'll go. Um, are we talking about the video where the students went to the president's office? Yeah, you talk oh, about that. Yeah. That's, a good, yeah. that's, a good one. that's a really good one. <laughs> that one, that part. Um, just the courage and the boldness of, of the students and, um, and you know, demanding to be heard. Uh, I just, I was uh, inspired by the students and hopefully my students will have that type of courage. So that's what intrigued me. So are you referring to the ones for, there was students for racial justice when they, when they went to the office of the president and the president wouldn't receive them and so they put on the door their demands? Or are you referring to the Student Homeless Alliance, which was a 15 minute video which they actually show them preparing for the meeting and then walking over and then sitting in the president's office with the president coming in and the president asking the press to leave. That, that too, but I think it was the one where it was sweat, sweatshops. Sweatshop, that one, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and that's an interesting one, Venice, because they didn't plan to go there. And it was the university nervous because she had heard it was the brand president Mary was just brand new and she had heard about the students doing this. And so she sent her chief of staff out to meet with the students and said, would you want to meet right now? Cause she did not want to get in a situation where they were, you know, pressing her. And um, so they had kind of learned. And so the students asked me, should we meet? And I'm like, you know, again, this is your thing, but I recommend you take that meeting. And so they said, okay, let's go. So they went in there and then I well, I saw you in there. How do you deal with that as the professor? I mean, I, I know you're full. I mean, you just I just I'm just thinking as you know, an assistant professor, what would an assistant professor do at that time? Um well I think I think um as I did when I was going up for tenure, because my students did do things, mm -hmm. and um I definitely um would go back. I don't do it anymore, but I did, I did it more to make sure that people didn't misunderstand or misconstrue my role in it. So I was very aware of my, you know, being seen as like, like, for example, my students did take over a stage of a very important professor that was speaking and they took the stage and they shut him down. Mm -hmm. So like, I didn't, I didn't, my students did that, but I didn't say they should do that. They did it on their own, right? So I made it clear <laughs> that the students were acting on their own accord, not based on what I was suggesting. So I think that's the kind of thing I did to protect myself to get tenure. Mm, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Other folks. That would be my concern is the um, potential for uh, misconduct happening and, and uh, we have the union where I'm active with the union, our California Faculty Association. And when we do our demonstrations, they always tell us, you know, the, pres the president doesn't want us to bring the students in and get too rowdy, this, that, and the other. I would but, just say what I, that's the, what I just described, I wasn't teaching this class at that time, 
none of my, I mean, my students are, and I'm just speaking, I'm not just, this is the way our students are in majority generally that they are so nervous getting back to Julie's point that, that they are, you know, they want, they're overcoming their fear to even walk up to the president or to engage with, you know, so they have to deal with that. So they're not like, you know, blow the place up or let's light it on fire. Or like, there's no, no violence and there's no like, they're not disrespectful. In fact, they're usually the opposite, like no ad hominem attacks. We want to be just, we were about justice. We're not about, you know, being totally. you know, seen as negative. So that's been my experience. And I remind that to the faculty, uh, to the administration, and to the campus community, if I ever hear, oh, our students are troublemakers, because I, I, I say, I see that as my role to say, they're just asking for uh, what they think is just. So they're not being disrespectful. And I, I remind them. And I think that's a role that we can play. And I think it would help, it helps all of us, I think, in our, in our statements. I wanted to show you, the, these are some other examples. They're, they're not in the book, they're in the book book. By the way, I just sent the galleys, thank God last night, off. They're done, yeah, oh my God. I had to do this, as many of you have written a book because I don't have lots of ton of money. I did my own index, which was a pain in the booty. So if you haven't done an index, it's not fun to go through all the words and find the page numbers, but it's done and it's over. Um, so that's been, but in the book, they have these images. So if you can look there and I'll show you a few yeah, of them yeah. um, on here. So this is an example of a rally and it's in, it's in now, it's, it, it, said, it said it was supposed to be there in your reading, but it wasn't. But that's an example of a rally um, on the, uh, can you move it over a little bit to the left? Cause I can't see it, my, there you go. So that's a, Alicia St. Laurent student leader, um, it's a year to the day of the implementation of the minimum wage campaign, which the students led. That's the that woman, is. that woman said, like she didn't even wanna be in the class. Like she was like, this is so annoying that I have to do social action. But she was a single mother who also was raising a kid who worked minimum wage. And so she got totally taken into this campaign and became a, the kind of the poster child for the campaign. But you see, there she is speaking, you know, the students get really good at signs. <laughs> they, there's their signs. Um, and, you know, they have their, you know, very clear. Uh, if you look up to the right, what's interesting about this picture on the right side um, is those are all the politicians. That's the assembly member, um, um, Kara, who's now our state representative. That's another one. These are all representative city council members, but they came out to support the students and in the one year anniversary of the minimum wage. So they were holding a press, a rally slash press conference. And usually the rally is a lot of times a press conference. So that's an example of that. Do you wanna to go to the other ones? This is an example of, a, of, a, of an Occupy space. So this is, as the San Jose State students will recognize, this is in our tower hall, right where the president's office is right above them. They took over that space. They had close to 100 students there um, uh, on this issue. And this is around um, a very explosive issue. And this was one that was resolved quite quickly. And it was the one where there was a racist comment made against Latinas. And the comment was Latinas don't have the DNA to be successful by made by a tower board member, which is our fund raising wing of our administration. So this comment was made, the vice president didn't say anything. Uh, there was a informal complaint made, a formal complaint made, nothing was done. The students took up the campaign and then within a very short time, won several major demands. One of which was the, the, the kicking off the person from the board, which they got. This is Marcos Pizarro, one of the people speaking. Uh, I love those signs. I have the DNA to be successful, that particularly when the Latinas would hold us up, it was quite powerful. It got a lot of press. It was every, you know, ABC, CBS all covered this story because it happened right after the DJ Williams, which was another racist incident on our campus. So it gave us an example, but I want to give an example of our students at San Jose State. They didn't want to get arrested. So they said to the president, can we occupy the space for several hours and then we'll leave peacefully? And they said, okay, you can do that. So it's just an example going back to um, what you said, Julie, 
you know, they wanted to be activists, but they also didn't, they didn't want to be, get arrested at that time, which is totally fine, right? So they came up with a plan to do an Occupy space, but not get arrested. This is an example of a lobby day. This is, of course, is Dolores Huerta in the middle with students and, um, and some community allies. We were going up to Sacramento to do an issue around um, free, ed, free tuition. And we had a possible bill going into the state assembly for that. And we happened to meet Dolores Huerta. She walked right into us. So we we're like, oh my gosh. So you never know what happens on a lobby day, but a lobby day is, is where you go usually to either the city hall, the county board of supervisors or the state capitol. And if you're lucky, sometimes DC and, and where you spend the whole day or sometimes two days in meetings with the assembly person or with the, with the representative or the chief of staff making the case. And uh, it's a very intense, you know, my students, they got up at five in the morning. We left at six, we got there at eight. We spent till five o'clock and then we came home that night. So it was an all day event. This is an example of a public hearing. This is assembly member Lieber during the hurricane Katrina. She'd heard about the students. She asked the students, would you, would we, I would like to do a public hearing and let's don't do it in Sacramento. Let's do it at the Martin Luther King Library. So it was open to the public. It was very formal. She brought five or six state assembly members. They had like a dais. It was like with a, you know, what's that thing? They, they hit it down, <laughs> the gavel, very formal. Uh, the press was all there. So they had the San Jose Mercury News covered it. And it was, students thought very much, very dressed up and presented what they had seen. They were like, they were like the astronauts coming back, you know, the people that visited and they came back and reported to the state assembly about what they had seen in Katrina. And, um, and California was interested in that because there are three disasters predicted by uh, FEMA. One was um, a, a terrorist attack in New York City. One was the flooding of New Orleans. And the third was a major earthquake in, the, um, uh, in California. So they were saying, we need to hear what's happening in Katrina to prepare ourselves for the third thing that hasn't happened yet in our, in our community. And um, it was very powerful. And they actually wrote a resolution. She carried a resolution that was sent. And this is against, you know, you know putting pressure on the target. A letter was sent from the state assembly to every member of Congress, all 435 and the president saying the state of California supports the students across the country for this idea for a, a public works project to rebuild the Gulf Coast. So it had some pressure to it, but it was a, it was a, a fun event for the students. And again, that came from um, someone contacting the students about that. The target yes, meeting- Yes, Scott, just, just one, just for, just what was struck me about the, the material yep. was that all this, you know, whether it's policy legislation change, these overall strategies, the end goal is the target meeting, yep. right? And and because sometimes you do, there's a sense of, well, we're doing a protest and we had the, the thing and nobody's ever focused on getting the decision maker, you know, clear demands in front of the decision maker. Um, so that that's what struck me about it. And then, then this, go ahead, you can introduce your. Yeah, and can we just, have you seen this? Have you seen like the, let's show like three minutes from this, which is, and go to 1.30. And I just want you to see them preparing for the meeting because, and this is, a, I mean, you'll see my role in that. They're leading the meeting, but I'm there in with them as they're preparing for their target meeting with the president, which took them four months to get, by the way. Um, that's of course in our beautiful DMH building. <laughs> so I'll be quiet and let's listen to this. Just hear them. Yeah, especially like the parking thing, the president, that other meeting colleagues are already doing yeah, you know, yeah. and now the city just passed last Tuesday the legal decision. Yeah. In fact, it would be such a great success to be the first. Uh, I, I mentioned this on the first. Can you imagine that? And I was like, why not be the first? Like, imagine how great that would make San Jose State. Like, yeah. First, public I think that would prove to her students that she really cares about like yeah. their needs. Yeah, I'm sure she and does. And there could be a point where we don't need that anymore. <laughs> once that long-term sustainability is in place. So, and obviously, we don't want this to be like a little longer term, you know, which is immediate, like now. Like, yeah. yeah. And that's something that will keep them accountable if they want to get rid of these programs and they need to make long term commitments to reduce the number of students experiencing. Yeah. 
what you said. We're treating the symptoms of a... Exactly. Of a bigger, treating the symptoms bigger. while you get them healthy. Yeah. 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 Like, um, or at least have a clear understanding of what this was going to be allowed. Alright, so I couldn't finish it. It wouldn't let me get so I could do it now. I don't think it's that important. Is it? Uh, Myra, are we allowed? Do you want to go first? What? Like, should we not bring the canopy? Um, in front, maybe not in the canopy. Yeah, maybe just leave. Okay, so what about the, uh, what's the other one? Um, I think it's fine. Yes, we can. We'll say we have over a thousand positions from teams that are already close to students. Yeah. Do you need to see what? The emails for like each petition. Really? Get that? Really? Yeah. It goes to them? Yeah. 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 Yeah
and that stopped them. But I wasn't going to let them attack the student. I think that's our that be my that's your role is to make sure like they don't attack or they don't threaten the students like with you know expulsion or you know what else you know like suspension or some other crazy thing that they could try to pull out. So I, that's I think that's your role. So then here's another role that I want to say. So show right at the end of the meeting, Bob. Yeah, but, but, but Scott, before we get there, to Stephen's point earlier, with without feeling you need to. Because you're there in that kind of setting, the students probably also are a feel like they're backed up, yeah. but b feel like they're not going to go overboard. That's right, right? Because it's you know they they have a relationship with you and they they're not going to yeah. go off. And and they're and I think what you said, Stephen, they're really well prepared because they know and they were way better prepared than the president and the VP for this meeting, and it showed in in the meeting that they were better prepared. And in fact, the agreement that was struck that the students are still trying to get implemented right now and still fighting for that is that that is they came in with a document they wanted and it's almost verbatim from the document that they they got passed because they were just better prepared than the other side, and so they just took what the students had to say. Okay, so show. Yeah, yeah, and Scott, one last thing. This video wasn't done by any of Scott's students. This was done by the student paper. Oh. So those dr that drum thing that was just them adding the editors adding a little bit of energy to it, which I thought was. And and what's so interesting is you hear you heard that you saw that like the students someone came up can I help and they're like absolutely you can help and they were like you can help table and then you saw them they were live streaming like I don't know how to live stream they were live streaming that and then they interview a student who just happens to go there and uh, who's there to see the meeting and says. Uh, you, you, you don't happen to be homeless, do you? She said, well, actually, I, I was homeless last year. And I'm here because I'm concerned about this issue. So it, it just makes it so real the, the, with that. And, and one of the students that we had with us was, had been homeless um, on the campus. Okay, so, 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 so that last little clip. The, yeah, so. So when they're coming out. Yeah. Not that. Yeah, there so we had go. the meeting. Had the meeting. Had, now then we're they're told, well, you can't be here. Yeah, we're told we're at, there she is. So she walked by them and then she came back because someone told her, you better go back and talk to the press. You know, we expressed in, in, inside with the students a commitment to finding a, a, a solution, a safe solution for every student. So that's our commitment. Yeah, this is the part you want to see. You want to see this part? That part, I want to see that part. Was it come out? So now the students are completely against it. Yeah, so they're not going to be They don't want to give the students a place to park their car. <laughs> they said it will cost too much. Yeah. So we're very sad and disappointed that they rejected our demands. Um, they did commit, though, to house, um, they did commit to house every student. So if you are currently a student who is facing housing security, please do reach out to us. Um, we are gonna do our best and attempt to continue to outreach more students so that they could go to NCSU Cares. Um, and um, so that was their commitment. They committed to help every student, but however, they're not 100% sure how that looks like. So there is no set plan. Um, and. You know, we, we, we pushed on saying about our, our demands and um, they're looking into, like I said, the long term, um, like sustainable housing every student. Um, so, yeah. Again, they aren't interested in our um, demands. Yeah. So, yeah. But so parking would cost too much. Yeah. Do, yeah. So it's for the cost and like liability. And, and they like, said they have grants that are unlimited. So, us asking for 2,500 students, maybe less students, maybe more. So yeah. they said they're committed to giving students whatever they need to get into a more permanent solution. Yeah. So, so the thing is that they they need to go through it just in order to receive. Um, so just to just to move this on, so they come out the doors. Yeah, but, um, two seconds. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know how they're going to do it. Yeah. Although we came with clear demands and we asked them how they were going to do it. Look at that. <laughs> firm, direct, you know, yes or no answer, but they did say they are committed to housing every single sport. And how will they, 
Again, they, they, can, they, they said they don't have a way other than the two beds that are here and the 12 beds that are at Grace Baptist. Well, they said that they would find a way. Yeah, they, they said they would find a way. Find a way. So they, they, there was a clue. Is time deadline and how long it's going to take them to do that? No. Uh, so has there been, have you been working with the city as well? Because I know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you talk a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So we've met with the mayor, met with a number of his team members. Now we're meeting with uh, uh, Jennifer Loving from Destination Home. They do some of the nonprofit coordination uh, to connect the university with more resources that we can get to students. And then there's that. And then there's, then they go out, right? So when, the one thing that I think is really, when you go back and watch that video, I hope you have watched the whole thing, which is this, the students that come around the corner, I mean, one is that I help them process when you watch the video, and that's your role is to help them process like, where are they right now about that, what they just heard? Like, and so I actually went through, I said, how, where are you on a scale of zero to 10 with like zero being the, you know, feel like it was a total waste of time and 10 was a success. Where are you? So they did a quick check-in and then I said, okay, this is where you are. There's all that press out there, five cameras. You need to make a statement. What do you want to say? Again, not telling them what to say, helping them figure out where they are. And in a very short time, within a couple of minutes, what do they want to make? What statement do they want to make to the press? Do they want to totally blast the administration? Do they want to have a hopeful tone that, you know, that they're, they're moving in the right direction, but they didn't meet the demands? But I, I, I tried to help them very quickly come to that. So that was, that's your role, I think. That's our role is not to tell them what to say or when to say it, but help them with that process that, you know, that, that they're going through. It was very exciting, by the way. They were on every major station again. Um, nothing happened for six months until they continually did nothing and another explosion happened on the campus and they decided to meet and agree to all the student demands. So sometimes when you, even when you lose, it's, it's not over. <laughs> that campaign took four semesters? Four semesters. And so- it's Still going on. In the, in, the, in the photos, I don't have them uh, right with me. The photos of the students at that press conference, totally different students. And the, not the same spokesperson anymore. No, no. Who, right. now the, some of the students stuck with it behind, you know, on the, on the overall student group, but the, the, the next set of students were the leaders, right, uh, Scott? That's uh, really, really interesting, right? So a campaign that doesn't get, won't, doesn't only win in, the, in that first go through. Uh, those students come back. There's a campaign book, which is the last thing they hand in. So the next group can pick that up as one of the choices. And 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 the student that was probably the quietest of all of them is now become, I call her, she's now my new Myra. The one that Myra that you saw there, who was this incredible leader, who was very quiet, transformed in this leader. And now we have a new Myra, her name's Lana. And she's this unbelievable leader, but she was the quietest, but she had seen other people go through the process and she's gone through it now. She's been meeting multiple times with the president and the administration, trying to get them to get that agreement. But I think the key role for, for the, when you're thinking about doing these events, right? They're events, they're the feign in, right? We didn't talk about the feign in, you did a street theater. My students are gonna do another street theater just for the San Jose State students. Uh, for the folks, they're gonna do a, uh, they're gonna do a, a press conference but they're gonna do a bit of street theater before they do the press conference to try to draw, draw some attention. And I, I, I think it will be, it's gonna be really powerful. Um, but I think the whole goal is to get that target meeting. So whatever you're doing, like you, get, you can have a great event, but if it doesn't get the target's attention, and I always say to the students, the goal is to make the, because right before the event, that your issue, I tell the students issues, probably 4,000 on their list or 2,000. And you wanna make it the top three things that the president or the whoever the decision maker is thinking about. And so all that attention press will get that, the, the eyes and ears of the university or of the city council or of the county board of supervisor on that. Does that make sense? 
you know, because it, 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 and it's done. I mean, it's exciting to do those kind of events, but I can always remind them, are we moving the target? That's the key thing. What, what's, what's the impact on the target? And then how can we then take that press and then tweet about it and social media eyes it and put it out and continue to put pressure and hashtag the president or hashtag the city council member and continue to use that to drive energy toward the target. Just to um, show you what I meant earlier, um, I put up on the mural board. So here's that press conference where they didn't get all the demands met, but they got the a commitment. And then here's a photo of after the announcement of the agreement. Presidents over here with their staff. Look who the press are all hanging out with. The student leader at that point, the spokesperson at that point. That that says that tells you a lot right there, right? And and that gal in the blonde, she's brand new. The gal on top top of the right for Diana. Uh, next one over, two over, Diana Rendler. She's new, and it, it happens every semester. A whole another group of students they'll come and take it on. Just amazing. So so Scott, the, the, the other thing that you said repeatedly in the video, and we've talked a lot about this, is most of these students have never spoken in public. No, certainly never made a demand in public. And this, is, and sometimes this is the quietest student who doesn't say anything, who then becomes the person who gets up. And you never know ahead of time, right? Who, where that's going to happen. Never. But it happens oh, fairly well, consistently, right? Well, I was thinking about that. So I would say right now, I, I would say out of the class of, you know, let's say 25, I would say 15 plus are highly engaged. Is that good? I think that's probably pretty good. I would like it to be 25, but I'd say 15 with three really powerful campaigns. And I always, and then I start pointing to that one because they see the ones that are really powerful. So I, I use them, I highlight them in, in the class. So you're gonna have the same issues. Like, and then for the ones that are not doing the work, I'll give you an example of this one campaign that's just, they're a nice group of students, but they just haven't done the work. So I just sent him a nice email two nights ago and said, you know what? I really like you all. I think you're all fabulous people, but we have to be honest with each other. You're not doing the work. And it's clear that you haven't, you don't have the commitment, you don't have the energy. And it's sad because your group could have really brought and still can bring about a major change. This is for, um, to have a, um, an art installation for the Filipino farm workers. And um, I, I, I kind of challenged them nicely. And one of them, they met afterwards with me and one of them spoke to me and then he sent me an email and said, thank you for that. We, we hear you. Like I didn't yell at them because they're busy. You know, our students are really busy. Well, I didn't, but, 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 I didn't but, chastise but, them, but I let them know if they continue to be on this path, they're not gonna, they're not gonna get, they're not gonna even do an action this year. So they've planned now an action for December 1st or 2nd which will be their first kind of announcement to the community that this group exists. And one of them has said they're gonna continue on next semester. So that student will have to then come back and make a pitch to the social action students to keep that campaign going, at least in my class. And so maybe Scott, on, that, on, that, on that point, um, with, uh, with two things. One is like Venice, your students are all already, they're all professionals. They're not full-time students, are they? They are uh, full-time students and full-time teachers. So then you have this, this interesting challenge. Okay, you have a three-hour class and um, once a week. So there's time for them to do teamwork there. But Scott, that's never enough time. They still need to do, besides the actions, they need to be doing teamwork outside of the classroom. And in my class, is going back to Steve's point too, about how much material can you cover? I would say compared to like the 165 wealth, poverty and privilege, I give about half of the reading of what I give in that class. Because I know I'm, I'm asking them to do an hour and a half outside of class. So I take an hour and a half of the reading and, and take like 20 to 25 pages I normally would have them read and I dedicate it to their community work. So I have, I'm going to be designating uh, three Saturdays um, next semester to meet with my students outside of outside of class Good. Um, to give them time to do what they need to do. Yeah. 
Awesome. Are, are, are Scott, are some of your students, just because of Zoom became a thing, is are they doing some of their team meetings over Zoom? Do you are you aware? I think so. Yes. I don't know that for sure, but I think so. So there might be a little bit of it. Might be a little bit of the people who have to tr travel doesn't mean your team can't meet. You can't do an action very easily online, but you can do the do the do the planning work together. Any other any thoughts or questions about all I've said? I mean, there's on some level a lot of things, but those are all. They're all interesting and it depends on which one they students gravitate. And I, I would say whichever ones the students gravitate towards do, <laughs> right? Because it's their energy. Could you say a little bit more about the campaign book that you have them put together for when the campaign doesn't finish in a term and what yeah. all they include? Yeah, so, and I'll say more about it later, but I'll just say briefly now, because I just, I passed out that assignment so I'm, it's in my head too is it's a campaign notebook and um and it's in two forms one is it's a, it's actual campaign binder and it's divided by and here's the thing that i always do is i divide it i keep it simple like issue development right in the same kind of order issue development um uh the, you know macro theory and you know kind of community change theory uh, you know, the tactics and strategy, build power, you know, power. Uh, what was the one we just did? We did that tactics and strategy today. Research. So those are the, the sections. So they, they already have some of that stuff. So, and I, ha I have a series of questions, which will, you'll be getting for that, that I asked them to respond to in addition. So they put that together. And then I have them do, when they turn that in on the last day, they give that to me, that then goes to, my students in the second class. But it can also go, by the way, I was thinking to Akilah and to, and to Steve and to Frank, it can also go to your students too, if you want, right? We can pass that around and you could pass, when you get yours going, pass them my way of what you're doing. But they also do a, um, a PowerPoint for their campaign of the major things they learned. And we could share that too. But they put together this, and they, I would say going back to Bobby's question, they put more work into that because they know it's going to be used next semester. It's not just for me. I say, look, yeah, I'm going to grade it, but it's really for the next semester's class. So they try a bit harder because it's real. Scott, out of curiosity, uh, I assume your university has to follow the FERPA laws, FERPA regulations. Um, how do you get around that with making the videos and classwork being shared and et cetera? I mean, because for us, I, I think it would take me at least a quarter to just to get all the permissions and get everybody on board with sharing anything at all from outside a class canvas shell. Uh, so I'm just curious how you handle that. Well, like what my, any conversation I have with my students, like if I'm like all my conversation is blind copied, like so no one ever sees like when I'm talking to students that no one ever sees like any other emails, for example, when I'm communicating. So there's that. What other things would you be like? What are you thinking about in particular? Just for example, I have to get permission if I want to share a, a student paper with another class as an example for a, I have to go seek permission. I have to make sure I take all the names off, um, any of the uh, metadata within the file. It's, at least at our institution, it's sort of, oh. FERPA is sort of followed to the letter, like no names, no no nothing. And you have to get the permission, the written permission. So anything that's been done like for my book or something like that, there's like, they're, they're not no longer students. So they're, they're alumni of the university. So. I don't, I have never done FERPA because they're, they're not connected to the university. But that, that's that, the things that I shared, right? That's their student, their reflections, you know, of, of, you know, if I usually an image, I have to get usually an image. Um, and those are like, if, if I put an image in a book that gets like the Rutledge would contact the students and get them to sign off on it. But that's all, I, I've never had to deal with the university on that on FERPA. Okay. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah. Do you all see that? <laughs> that out. I got to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not sharing. I'm not sharing their papers. 
like I'm, the, I mean, the, 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 isn't that kind of what you're doing? Oh, with the the camp, you're talking about the campaign notebook? Yeah. Well, no one's ever said anything. I've done it for 15 years. Okay. Well, that is a strategy I can do with, I can deal with, you know, just do it. And then if, then, you know, ask for yeah. forgiveness you later, you right? <laughs> I, I wonder what, I mean, conceptually, what would it fall under a campaign notebook? Like what rule would it fall under? It's a, it's a I'm not sure what it is that, that would be governed by something like that, but I just don't know. I, I don't know. I never thought about it. What you're saying. <laughs> if I hear Sue, I'll, I'll let you know. And, and, and it, it, I mean, I don't mean to be facetious or, or light about it, but like I'm doing things that definitely like, in my, I feel much more like, you know, for example, chalking. Chalking on our campus is illegal. It's a legal thing. Do you all know that by the way, Venice and Frank? And it's illegal to chalk on our campus. Chalk. My students, I just say, just don't tell me. I don't want to know you if you chalk, right? That's, that's you. Don't, don't talk to me. But I'm just giving you, that's a small example of like things that are, I know that are against the, but don't tell me about it. Like, I don't want to so know. You're a little bit of this. I don't want to know what you do. A little do. bit of this. I know, I know students, not me, you know, the students have done like, you know, if they're doing a walkout, not in my class, not a part, but I know my, my students have done walkouts on the campus and they'll have a megaphone. University police did not like that very much. Don't tell me about those things. I don't want to know. Like that to me is outside my, my students. Like what, they're adults. But I just give you an example, like walking kind of a fine line. Like, am I like the taskmaster over my students? It's, as long as I, I feel like it's more, much more important. They're respectful and they're, you know, I, I'm helping them that way. So I don't feel like, you know, I, I think, you know, by just by doing this, you kind of enter into some gray zone. Let's put it that way. And I try to do it as, as truthfully and honestly as possible without breaking too many laws or any laws. <laughs> well, the, the, you know, when you, as I edited the highlight video, the, well, the start out. of that video is <laughs> it, it, it's about to be a rocket ship. So as you finish strategy and tac tactics, the next one is launching. That's right. It's, it's, pretty early in the semester in your case well I'm in the middle it's sort of in the middle of the semester in your case typically the goal is to get at least two actions uh during the rest of the semester um so it's just this is where we are right this is this is the the big thing that's happening um and we'll talk about that the next session which is which is december 10th um so we're skipping two week two fridays uh obviously thanksgiving friday and the next one We'll have one more session before uh, the big holiday, and then we come back and um, and have a um, uh, sort of the you know one more session before we before we finish up. So we're just jumping over here for our dates. Kickoff is December tenth. The campaign pan, but and, and by that you're really talking about the campaign notebook and the rest of the planning, right? Uh, Scott, that, and also, then, you know, that, that's really getting at a series of events because uh, here's what happens. They'll do one event. They're like, whoa, we did one event. I'm like, well, that's good. Now you got to, what, what are you going to do next? And I try to get them to think, think in terms of three or four events over a couple of years, even if they don't do it. But, you know, it, it might take six months to a year to win. So you're going to have to think of a series of events to put together a series of actions. So I try to get them to think like that and then create a timeline. And then the next one is the kind of the, the campaign evaluation, which is got the notebook. Yeah. And then just, just to let you all know, um, the 28th, the last session, uh, the goal will be, and we'll, we'll, we'll put this in a couple of emails, but uh, those of you who are planning a course and, and, and we have that template, that could be a document you use, but some version of your syllabus and your, your teaching game plan uh, sent to Scott, ideally, uh, in advance of the um, January 28th session for him to react to. Uh, obviously, a one-on-one -on -one session with him is a good idea if, if, if you have time and um, at and some point. I'm glad point. to do that with you all, so just let me know. Yeah. 
And depending on how many we get in before then, part of that last session will be you guys presenting to the rest of the group what your, what your course plan is. And then part of what we're going to be doing, talking to you, probably starting uh, after, you know, in January, but before those last two sessions, is I'm, I'm going to come back and pick your brains a little bit about how we might organize this next time. Now that you've gone through, you know, I haven't gone through all of it yet, so we'll, we'll get closer to the end to begin that conversation. But thinking about different options for how we might work with another group of faculty, A, but B, you're all going to start doing this. So how do we keep you talking to each other? Well, what kind of support interaction do we want to organize there? Um, how often, in what format? Uh, obviously, you can always get in touch with Scott, but, but as a group, it's kind of nice to hear from each other. Wow, how did it go? How is it going? Um, so we want to think that through as well, because we have, we've been so focused on sort of managing this, we haven't really thought about the larger group. I think Scott's counts will have at least 10 faculty in the spring teaching classes. Well, then there's a real opportunity to begin to sort of create a community of practice where we're really learning from each other. And as you teach this a second and a third time, taking your lessons learned and sharing those with folks. So that, that's a big part of our sort of thinking as we move ahead. It was great, great. You know, well, I, enjoy it. I hope everybody, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I hope it's yours. Yep. En enjoy it. And we'll see you um, in, a, in a couple of weeks. And all those videos are up on the Bonner website. So you yeah. can find all that information. And I added that on the mural board as well, just as a, a convenience. I added it right here, a link to that page. So you can get there. Just double click on this image and you'll be able to get to any of those things. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you, Frank. Thank you. Bye, bye, Bobby. Thank bye. you. Yep.